Here is why Andrew Tate has been banned. This is the biggest reason, something I want to discuss, and I do believe this is the way forward. Andrew Tate was banned because he's a philosopher. Not only is he a philosopher, but he's also a spiritualist. I myself consider myself to be the same. That's why I was able to recognize this. Not going too deep into myself, but that's what I do consider myself to be. And it's very becoming of the new age of what we're moving into. So why was he banned specifically though? And I really want to discuss this because the reason why he was truly banned, and this isn't going to sound as sexy, but it's the true reason. You know, we could get into the conspiracy of, oh, he was banned because of the global elites. He was banned because techno censorship. He was banned. Those are all true. But the real true reason as to why he was banned was because of this. So although Andrew considers himself to be a philosopher, he's also a phenomenal orator. And by orator, I also mean that he's phenomenal with debate. Now, if you are not understanding of this, what this really does wrap down to is philosophy, right? Philosophy isn't just having an idea set by which you live by and you enact onto the world. Philosophy is sixfold, and I'm not even gonna get into all that. But the biggest thing that you have to understand is, so Andrew Tate has his philosophy he has found wisdom, which is what I promote as well. But he's also used the tenets of philosophy to be able to become a threat to the establishment. As we look around today, the biggest people that are calling for, for Andrew Tate's cancellation are people who cannot beat him in debate. They can't beat him. They can't beat his philosophy they can't beat his arguments and they're threatened by that. The way to win moving forward is philosophy. I talk about this in my new book or my, sorry, I do talk about it in my new book, but I talk about it in my older book, part one of uh, A Patriarch's Vision, Purging Feminism. I have a whole chapter dedicated to philosophy and understanding certain things. But the big thing that you have to understand as far as philosophy as a tool and how we win. So we already have the overarching philosophy of the quote unquote manosphere red pill, which I just consider truth. That's all it is, it's truth. It's truth of reality. Understanding why we have these sexual proclivities and why it's best for society. But then we also understand it from evolutionary terms. We also understand it from a spiritual sense. I believe it's one of the things that I discussed in one of my recent videos, uh, polygamy is godly. Um, where I discuss that these types of structures are set up by God. That's how we can actually understand this is God driven, right? We understand things from a hierarchical sense. So um, evolutionary biology. So we can start to understand that this is the truth. This is what the red pill really is. Morpheus gives Neo the red pill so that he could see the truth and see where the uh, rabbit hole takes him. That's all the red pill is. It's not necessarily the movement. It's just the truth. So we already have this philosophy. We already understand these things. But the next stage is not just understanding a philosophy. The next stage and the real base level of what philosophy is, is now understanding logic gates. Okay. This is where a lot of people don't understand. And it's not a sexy thing to talk about, but the biggest issue that we see in our world today, and this is my biggest argument against the education system currently, both, um, K through 12, right? And both un and, and university, but mainly K through 12. Because what happens in K through 12 is they're not teaching you how to think, they're teaching you what to think. They're already programming your mind to take in information, take in information, take in information, and then say back on a test the information that they want you to say. There's no interaction with the information. It is just take this information in, dump it out when we tell you to, remove that information, then take in the new information we want. And we see this with like the revisionist history. We see this with the whole deal with like the wage gap myth, feminism, the stuff that's intertwined into that, not understanding um, what's really occurred in our past 
even usurping our constitution today and just kind of dumbing it down to like, oh, it was a bunch of old white slavers that made this constitution, therefore the constitution is made by slavery and it's white supremacy, right? So you can understand now how that type of information is being drilled into these kids and now they're just regurgitating it out. I call these people zombies, right? It's why you see all these people now reacting to Tate and the only thing they can say is, oh, he's an incel, he's a sex trafficker, he's a misogynist, but they don't have any actual rational type of debate um, response. What's the word I'm looking for? Come on, it begins with an R, rebuttal. They don't have any actual true rebuttal to be able to knock down his belief system, his philosophy, his logic, his rhetoric. They don't have any ability to do that because they've never been programmed to process information uh, and think through it. So the, the only way that things can happen now is when you don't know how to process information through logic gates, you become emotional. You have an emotional reaction to information and because you are emotional, you now think that your emotional reaction is truth and you feel justified in it. First, you have to be able to organize and, and be able to interact with information and be able to start to categorize it in your mind taking control, being able to critically think. Then you have to start to be able to structure it in your mind of interacting with it and then finding out whether or not that information is true. And then now you're also starting to form the argument in your mind as well. So now you're forming your own conclusions by which your next step is moving into the, re the rhetoric, right? Of now being able to speak your conclusions or your beliefs in a public setting or in a debate, which I think is huge. So that's the next aspect of it is being able to understand your rhetoric and being able to speak it in such a, a, a good, clear, concise manner that you understand the impact behind what you're saying and then actually being able to do it. So debate, I believe, is a huge, huge aspect. This is why I don't believe in the current state of where things are with Tate. I don't believe in canceling him. A, a person who is well-versed in philosophy such as myself, this is why I will read, I mean, shit, I have the Communist Manifesto over there, right? Um, I've read all sorts of different books of people that and philosophies that I don't believe in, but I'm gonna read it because I truly believe that my mind is so strong, that my, my, my rational faculties and my critical thinking is so strong, and I believe so wholeheartedly in my philosophy as well, that I can listen to other people's philosophies and not worry that my philosophy is gonna be tainted, but if that philosophy is better than my philosophy, then I have to figure out a way to either make mine better or adopt all of that philosophy or parts of that philosophy into my philosophy. And this is where we go wrong with a lot of people today and this is why they wanna cancel. Because they're so comfortable being locked into the status quo. They're so comfortable being locked into this identity politic group where they don't have to think. This is also why I feel, I honestly feel that religion, even though I'm becoming a little bit more, I'm being honest, becoming a little more accepting of religion because I understand its place and role, but I think that it needs to be tailored in a new direction. And I'll, I talk about that in my new book as well. Anyway, the zombies, right? They all belong to this social group that tells them what to think and then they just regurgitate what they're told to think because the biggest thing is that they've already ascribed to not wanting to have to think. So when someone comes along that challenges their belief, it's why they attack with certain rhetorical devices, right? Such as, you know, uh, these logical fallacies, right? So ad hominem attacks, they have poor rhetoric when it comes to being able to argue. They, they, they move into all the wrong directions as to how to argue and they argue off of their feelings. This is kind of what sophistry was. This is what uh, Socrates had to deal with back in the day, right? That's why he's um, really one of the biggest ones that pushed back against and, and fought against sophistry, which moved philosophy in a new direction. So that's the next thing that you have to understand, right? <laughs> you have to understand the next part of debate is you now have to understand logical fallacies. And this is all responsibility. Like you have to be, this is why leftism today is just so dangerous, right? And this is why there's so many people that ascribe to it because everything that I've mentioned up to this point takes responsibility. And then it also takes effort, right? You have to be responsible for your mind. You have to be responsible for what comes into your mind, what goes into your mind, how you digest that information, then how you 
uh, move it into your own words and how you start to understand it. Then you're responsible for how you speak it. And then once you speak it, you have to understand that you're gonna have to debate that, <laughs> that, under, that context, right? You're gonna have to debate that uh, argument and that's gonna form somebody, somebody else is gonna form a rebuttal. And then you're gonna have to understand how you're gonna have to rebut that other individual, but not using any of these um, logical fallacies. So now there's an even bigger responsibility and there's even more effort and you have to be quick and you have to be sharp. Anyway, this is a long way of talking about how philosophy is really the true weapon by which can be yielded against the current mainstream narrative, the current holders of power. And we can see how through Andrew Tate, um, using these same faculties that I just described, how and why he was canceled. Because it's easier for you to remove someone's ability to speak. This is what happened to Socrates. I don't know if you've all followed this or not, but Socrates was killed. Um, he was told to drink hemlock um, because of the fact that he was converting the youth. This is what was said by the power structure. The power structure couldn't argue him. They couldn't defeat the Socratic method. They could, They saw Socrates as a nuisance because Socrates would come in and he would check the power structures. Um, <clears throat> and it was easier for them to say he's corrupting the youth and he's gonna turn the youth against us essentially uh, than it was to actually argue any of his points because then that would mean they'd actually have to do some real work. So anyway, with that said, uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, with that said, that is why Tate was actually truly canceled. This really truly is how you can really embolden yourself and become someone or something in this world today. And it's simply through studying philosophy. And I mean, I say it's simple, but it really isn't. It's, it's a practice, it's an art. It's something that's absolutely beautiful. Um, and I think it really does bring someone closer to the spiritual world. And I can get into that at a different level through understanding philosophy. You can now turn yourself into a higher, living energetic vessel, right? Crazy as that sounds. But anyway, with that said, deeply enjoyed this conversation. Please do like and share, 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 comment, comment, comment. Those are the two greatest things that you could do for me right now. Share it with a friend, comment below. Honest to goodness, please do that. With that said, I am the out of here. So I'll see you guys later.